Mm. Melissa, I was going to ask you because we're having this conversation and look, you know I agree with you about uh, Chinese sort of soft power, or what you might describe, describe as soft aggression, influence, etc. But none of, I don't think none of us, no, no one watching this would want like another Cold War or a confrontation with China. But do you think essentially there is no way to deal with China without confronting them because there's no way to, to get them to to behave, as you you put it, more responsibly? Well, I think decoupling was the way to do it. You know, the, the Cold War, I mean, there's an argument to be had that the Cold War actually, we didn't win the Cold War, it didn't end. Um, China is the torchbearer. But, but the analogy of the Cold War breaks down because we actually engaged with China um, economically. And we didn't do that with the USSR. You know, we let the USSR basically bleed out financially and it collapsed because of its imperialist adventures and, and eventually was just financially unstable. Um, but that's not the case for China. You know, China is empowered economically in part because we're addicted to very cheap goods. Um, and, and we didn't hold China either to its, you know, certain promises that it was supposed to keep um, when it joined the World Trade Organization. We've kind of let China have its way with the world on its terms and, and not held it accountable for things like pillaging, you know, um, intellectual property, uh, corporate espionage, um, even these like massive cyber hacking um, sort of scandals, you know, stealing all the OPM data and things like that. So we just haven't really held China accountable to some sort of like international norms. We've let them have a pass because we just wanted to trade with them. And, and in a way, we've really committed a, a terrible mistake. Um, it's not going to go the way of the USSR because we're now entangled economically. But there are still ways to, I think, decouple. Um, there, there are especially industries that we need to decouple for sure. So if you look at anything that um, that involves, say, like making parts for the electric grid, um, these are things that are implicated in our national security to let China build our 5G networks. You know, that is why would you do that? Right. <laughs> so so there are ways to, to at least uh, identify the industries that are crucial, um, that are potentially, you know, kind of weak spots if we let China even contribute certain certain parts and, and decouple from, from that. And Mel, we, we were talking about soft power grabs. Can you see in the next few years China making a hard power grab, maybe invading Taiwan? They've certainly had their eyes on it for a long time now. The uh, U.S. Navy estimates that the chances are that China would actually try to do that in the next seven years. Um, and that's good news. Yeah, it, you know, and it's one of those things like I think the U.S. appetite for intervention, military intervention after Afghanistan and after Iraq is pretty much zero. So I, I don't know how, you know, U.S. public opinion uh, would, would shape the the um, sort of capacity for our government to to do anything or the West to do anything in general. Um, but but an invasion of Taiwan is egregious. And if you don't stop China there, where would you stop? I mean, Taiwan is democratic. It's it's independent. It's been, you know, its own country for since 1949. Yes, it was a military dictatorship for a while, but it liberalized um, the nationalists liberalized in, in ways that makes Taiwan completely the most actually the most uh, vibrant liberal democracy in all of Asia was the first Asian country to actually um, introduce and, and allow marriage equality, gay marriage. So Taiwan is, is a beacon of, of, of freedom and a very important counterpoint to this narrative that, you know, Asians kind of uh, need a different system because they're culturally distinct. Uh, that's something that China has been repeating for a long time, uh, the CCP, that, uh, you know, Asian populations prefer collectivism uh, but the Taiwanese and and the Chinese have the same DNA, and they're they're separated by you know a body of water, but they have two different systems. Those two countries are thriving in different ways, and it's such an important counterpoint to China that it and and you know beyond the fact that China sees it as rightfully there, so the historical baggage, all the more makes China wants to reunify and take Taiwan by force. Uh, Xi Jinping has said this. There, there's just like this is one of those issues that has like zero wiggle room for the current regime. And, and if they take China, if they, if China does take Taiwan, what's next? Japan is right there. 
you know, it's it's uh, a power in in the the Pacific area. You have Hawaii. It's really close to you know the the west coast of uh, the United States. So it's a direct military threat. And um, I, I mean, personally, I'm in favor of intervening. We have to intervene to do something if if China ever takes uh, ever takes Taiwan. I mean, you say that we have to intervene, but we haven't so far. We looked at the situation with Hong Kong. I mean. A couple of leaders came out, you know, Boris Johnson said something. I can't really remember it, but it was largely pointless. Can't you just see the West shrugging their shoulders again? Well, I think the problem with Hong Kong was the treaty that was signed. At the end of the day, you know, by 2047, Hong Kong was going to return to China no matter what. China just sped up the process and, and dishonored the agreement, did not grant 50 years of autonomy, one country, two systems to, to Hong Kong. Um, and so it was really just a matter of like time. It just, you know, it did everything it was going to do in 2047, 20 years ahead of schedule. Um, in Taiwan's case, there would be a very egregious military um, intervention that China, you know, it, it, that there's no agreement with, with Taiwan. Actually, this is one of those ongoing conflicts that that well, just like Palestine and Israel that that have been, you know, since kind of the, the initial world order really post World War Two. It just hasn't been solved, and um, I, I, I just don't see I just don't see those those two things as as, as similar. Mm.